All right. Chapter 26, Bowel Elimination. So just a disclosure, I do not own this material under fair use. I am providing lecture content for only my nursing students using this material. All content within is for educational purposes only for nursing students and does not provide medical advice. So the process of bowel elimination, some of the words that you might hear, defecation, which is the process of elimination of waste, and feces, which is the semi-solid mass of fiber, undigested food, and inorganic material. What cannot be broken down. The structures of the gastrointestinal tract include the upper GI tract, the small intestine, the large intestine, the rectum and anus. The process of bowel elimination, fecal matter reaches the rectum, the stretch receptors initiated initiate the contraction of the sigmoid colon and the rectal, rectal muscles. The internal anal sphincter relaxes. The sensory impulse causes voluntary bearing down and the external sphincter relaxes. So there's internal and external sphincters. Some factors that affect bowel elimination, the developmental stage, personal and social cultural factors, nutrition, hydration, activity, medications, surgery, and procedures. Pregnancy and pathological conditions. So certain things will cause you to lose water in the stool. Certain things will help you to keep water in the stool. So we're gonna talk about a whole bunch of diseases in here like colitis, pouches, which is diverticulitis, diverticulosis, colitis, all that good stuff. So there are two bowel diversions. There's an ileostomy and a colostomy. And I know we talked about this. So ileostomy is in the ileocecal area. So the beginning part, the ascending large intestine. You could also have a colostomy in the transverse but a colostomy is usually near this, the colon, on the descending part. So the difference in the two stool textures, ileostomy is watery because the water hasn't come out of the bottle yet. And colostomy is more formed. So Socratic reasoning. <laughs> Bowel elimination is affected by a number of factors. See the list on the previous slide, including personal and social cultural factors. How comfortable would you be discussing bowel elimination with your older patient, a teenage patient, or a pregnant patient? Give an example of how cultural factors may influence the discussion. So just discuss that. All right. So assessment part of this, do a focused nursing history and a focused physical assessment. What kind of assessment do you think? An abdominal assessment. And the nursing history would be like the use of laxatives, the use of Metamucil, things like that. What do they need? 
how many um, times a week do they go to the bathroom? Uh, how many times a day do they go to the bathroom? Have you had any problems going to the bathroom? Okay. Common diagnostic tools that we use, a flat plate of the abdomen would be helpful, but sometimes we cannot see what we need to see, so we end up going in with direct visualization of a colostomy or a sigmoidoscopy. So you should know the sigmoid colon. You should know all the parts of the um, large intestine because if you think about it, you're going to be prepping these people <laughs> for a colonoscope. So colon scope, I'm going to put a, a scope in the colon, not very far. Look around, see if there's anything, pouches, diverticula, whatever. Sigmoidoscopy is going to go in further, okay, to the sigmoid colon. So on the other end of that would be endoscopy going down the throat. So the throat camera can only go down so far. Some other lab tests, um, the stool for occult blood. So think about this. Usually these cards are sent home with the patient and the patient opens it up, takes the little tongue depressor, opens up the card, smears some of the stool on it, and then shuts it. When they get three cards done, they send it in or come back and hand it into the lab. And on the other side is two little windows. You open up the two little windows and you use the developer, which is in a drop bottle, and put it on the back side. So we used to do this all the time on the floors, but that's been taken away from us. Okay. So in most places, you're not allowed to do that anymore, that it goes to the lab. So that would be either the nurse would be doing this, especially if the patient was not able to get up. So what it does is the developer looks for any blood and it'll turn blue on the back of the paper. The back of the paper is white and when you drop the drops on it, it'll turn blue in the presence of blood. So the nurse knows that the results of the occult blood test can be inaccurate if, all right, clicker check. The client has had an excess intake of red meat. The client is menstruating. The client takes high doses of vitamin C or D, all of the above. So every single one of those is true. So let's go back. The in excessive intake of red meat will cause a positive result. If you're menstruating, blood is in there. Taking a high dose of vitamin C will also turn the test positive. So you have to be able to talk to the patient about these things so that they do not have an inaccurate test. So some of the nursing diagnoses you might see, bowel incontinence, constipation, chronic constipation, risk for constipation, perceived constipation, diarrhea, gastrointestinal motility alteration, and toileting self-care. The planned outcome evaluation is soft formed regular bowel movements. And some of the things that you can do to promote regular defecation would be make sure that there are privacy so using a curtain or a door, again, just like urinary, make sure that that's appropriate. You don't want to ever shut the door if there's a safety issue and you can't see the patient. Get them in the correct position, which means seated upright. 
which again we talked about in urinary, can be very difficult when someone's on bed rest and can't bend at the waist. Timing usually occurs after meals and some clients may need assistance. So thinking about after breakfast coffee. So promoting regular defecation, fluid intake. Okay, so the whole goal here is to get more fluid to the ascending and transverse colon. Okay, every single time on the test question. If there's an option to increase fluids, increase fiber, and increase activity, those are the ones you want to choose. Every single time. How is getting too much water a problem? It's not, as long as they're not a renal patient. So how do you increase fiber other than Metamucil? Fresh fruits and vegetables. Whole grains. Fiber, fiber, fiber. Okay, so exercise three to five times a week. Range of motion for people who are on bed rest. Again, fluid, diet, exercise. Every single time, it's going to be your answer. Some common alterations, obviously. Diarrhea, constipation, fecal impaction, and bowel diversions. So diarrhea, too much water in it. Constipation, not enough water in it. Fecal impaction, it's starting to build up. It may be so dried out. We have to go in and get it out. If that, that backs up to your small bowel obstruction. And then bowel diversions, as we already talked about, ileostomy, colostomy, all that good stuff. So managing diarrhea, what would you want to do? Think about this as a baby with loose watery stools. Aren't you worried about the perianal skin? Always. So putting a zinc oxide protectant ointment on them. Keeps it waterproof. Keeps the feces away from the skin. Monitor stools to quantify diarrhea. Assess and monitor for fluid imbalance. And monitor for alterations in the skin integrity, skin breakdown. Proper dietary teaching. Clear liquids. So we always go back to clear liquids when someone's on diarrhea precautions. We also have what's called the BRAT diet. Bananas, rice, applesauce, and toast. And then we tell them about foods to avoid. Make sure you know the foods to avoid when someone has diarrhea. Antidiarrheals, not recommended for acute diarrhea. That would be Lamodal, Imodium, and just teach clients about over-the-counter aids. Um, these are great if you're in a real problem, right? But a one-time diarrhea, you probably don't need this. Okay. Low motil, low motil, low mot motility. So the motil is going to slow the processing of that food out of the body. It's going to slow down the pulsations. Okay, it's going to pull back some water. Increase the intake of high fiber foods. Increase your fluid intake for constipation. Increase activity, exercise, provide privacy, help them get in a position that facilitates defecation. Y'all seen those stools, right? There's little stools to go underneath your toilet to put your feet up higher. Think about that next time. 
allow uninterrupted time. Some people need their phone or a magazine. <laughs> Offer laxatives when lifestyle changes are ineffective. So laxatives are not going to be your first option. People get addicted to laxatives. So you don't want to do that. All right. Clicker check. Miss Addie is 70 years old. While the nurse is gathering admission assessment data, the patient states, I've taken a tablespoon of milk of mag every day for three years. Which nursing diagnosis is most appropriate for the nurse to use in their care plan of care? Think about this. A tablespoon of milk and mag every day for three years. <laughs> she has provided me no evidence that she needed it, but that she's taking it. And what do we know about magnesium from chapter 35's recording? It can really throw your magnesium labs out of whack. So that's probably not a really good idea. Education, education, education. I would say perceived constipation, but let's see. All right. So daily laxative use by the patient might suggest that she perceives she is constipated and the nurse would gather further assessment data related to the patient's bowel pattern. There's not enough data to infer actual constipation. Ask her, how many times a day or a week do you poop? So if somebody only goes once every three days, that's their batter pattern. Don't treat them with constipation just because they didn't go one day. All right. So ways that we can get things to start working, um, enemas. So there might be a cleansing enema, a retention enema, or a return flow enema. When you go into skills 3.0, you will see enemas. A cleansing enema is run to clear. So you continue to run it until it's clear. Um, retention enema means that they're going to hold their butt cheeks together as long as possible and then get to the bathroom. A return flow, again, you're continuously flowing it in and waiting for it to run clear and they would be on the toilet while you were doing that. They would not be in bed. So this enema that she's giving is a retention enema it's just a little bottle of fluid with a tip on it. You put it in and they retain it as long as they can go to the bathroom. Okay. So a lot of these work on the salt principle. Okay. So if you put a load of salt in, water will be pulled into that area, making it easier to get rid of. That's all enemas are for, is adding water to the area to water it down to make it come out. So digital removal of stool is a manual or a digital removal, which literally means your finger. So we also call this disimpacting. Sometimes we have to disimpact a patient. Establishing bowel program to prevent the reoccurrence. So bowel programs are big in nursing. Um, so every bowel program will be different at every hospital that you work, but it usually means that there's a set standard of uh, how much water to give them, how much fluid, and then additional fiber protocol. So when they're on a bowel program, they might get an enema once a week. They might get colace, a stool softener, every day. So you just need to know who's on a bowel program so that you can hold those meds if they have diarrhea that day. 
Um, a bowel program is most important for people with spine injuries or recovering from a stroke because they're more apt to have problems with that. So bowel incontinence, there are external collection devices, there are internal drainage devices, and bowel training programs. Know about these. Some of the external collection devices, we actually have a rectal tube. If somebody is literally oozing at the end of life, we will put a rectal tube in and the rectal tube, the poop comes out into a bag similar to a Foley catheter. Okay. Internal drainage devices similar to a colostomy. Establishing a bowel training program. So you discuss it with the patient. You increase fiber and in diet gradually. You increase the fluid intake to eight uh, glasses a day. And then you establish a designated time for defecation. Asking them what usually is their time helps. Provide privacy. The treatment plan should be staged, should offer a stool softener, and should be modified based on the client results. So again, make sure that you slow it down if they're working. And then the biggest thing is the bowel diversion. So a di bowel diversion would be an ostomy. And the stoma is the biggest thing that would be on the test. So the stoma skin needs to be beefy red, just like in this picture. So this is rectal tissue out to the abdominal wall. So what would you want to call the doctor for? If that was black, purple, blue, any other color, then beefy red. Beefy red means blood flow. Okay, so you're paying strict attention to skin care and peristomal skin assessment. So think about this. If you had a sticky wafer sticker on your belly all the time, you might have skin breakdown underneath, especially if they cut the wafer too big. So test question, the wafer needs to be one eighth of an inch larger than the hole. So it comes with little circles templates. You put the circle template on it and you determine which one is more like an eighth of an inch. So that's not very big change one eighth into a number one divided by eight know that number because sometimes they'll use that to trick you a fourth of an inch is 0 0.25 so you need half of that so if they ever give you 0 0.125 on the test that is one eighth of an inch okay so you don't want the wafer any much larger because the poop's going to get underneath and cause issues. A stoma bag appliance needs to be changed at least every seven days. It may not even last that long if they have a lot of liquid stool coming out. And then remember that you need to empty it when it's one third full. So notice the amount and type of effluent coming out. Effluent, effluent is what's coming out. So it's not called stool because most of the time it's more watery than stool. A lot of water comes out in the colon. So you're not having that happen anymore. Okay. So be attentive to the client's psychosocial needs. So I will give you the caveat that there are tons of NCLEX questions about this. When you have an ostomy, you need to go way back down on the Maslow's hierarchy, especially if they've had no time to prepare for this. Okay. So herein lies the problem. They're not going to go home from the hospital until we know that they can take care of it. If they can't look at it, they're not going to be able to take care of it. There are some people with self-image 
disturbance from this procedure. They think that they'll have their wife do it. Well, their wife's not going to want to do this. Okay. So be attentive to the client's psychosocial needs. Be professional. Show acceptance. Attend to odor control. And address client participation in ostomy care. They must take care of this by themselves in order to go home. Client teaching for home care, they must know how to change their appliance. They must know how to cut the holes in the appliance bag, the wafer. So there's a lot of client education to be done. If we know they are coming in for this procedure, we will start pre-education prior to the procedure so that they're aware what this is going to look like when it comes out. You don't always have that luxury. All right, so safe and effective nursing care. You're caring for a patient with a colostomy. In order to provide safe care, you understand when irrigating the colostomy, a proper fitting cone is needed to prevent introducing air in the colon, leaking the solution around the stoma, administering the solution too rapidly, or the introduction of bacteria from the stoma. A proper fitting cone. Just looking at that, is air in the colon an issue? It's wide open. I don't think so. Leaking the solution around the stoma. Knowing that periostomy skin is so important, that is probably my best one. Administering the solution too rapidly. That's on you and how high you hold the bag of water. So that's not a properly fitting cone. An introduction of bacteria from the stoma. The bacteria from the stoma came from inside, so that's not an option. There you go. Okay. Another one. The nurse is assisting a client in caring for their ostomy. The client states, oh, this is so disgusting. I'll never be able to touch this thing. The nurse's best response is, I'm sure you'll get used to taking care of it eventually. Yes, it's pretty messy, so I'll take care of it for you today. It sounds like you're really upset. You sound really angry. Should I call the chaplain for you? thought process. I'm sure you'll get used to it okay, uh, eventually. Not very therapeutic. Yes, it's pretty messy. I'll take care of it for you today. It's not self-care. You sound very angry. I'll call the chaplain for you. He didn't ask for the chaplain. Two, you're passing the buck. You're getting somebody else to call. He didn't say he wanted to pray about it. It sounds like you are really upset. This gets them to keep talking, showing the principles of therapeutic communication. Keep them talking. Get them to tell you what they feel. Awesome. 